So we're uh, coming to the end of uh, Mental Health Week and uh, my experience of the day as I've been in two livestock markets today, some big sales as I've been listening to people rounding about the place my experience of it is that there's a lot of mental ill health about the place to be aware of and if a week helps people to deal with that get used to the idea and address it rather than trying to hide it all away and I think that's a good thing the theme for this year's National Mental Health Week has been uh, loneliness and you can imagine in the farming community in particular in places like this where people live long ways apart and many farmers don't get off the farm very often loneliness can be a real issue and it can really affect your mental health but let's be honest you can be really lonely in a crowd as well the sort of idea that nobody understands and nobody cares and you can have that when you're surrounded by people so loneliness gets gets everywhere now I don't know whether it's because I deal with a lot of people who live in remote rural settings like this or not but it hasn't been loneliness that's been the theme of the last few months in my experience um, in terms of things that are threatening to mental well-being it's it's actually been impulse control impulse control causing a lot of problem now there's such a thing and it's a serious serious matter it's a feature of a number of mental illnesses as well as being a thing itself it's called impulse control disorder and it's characterized by rapid unplanned actions and accompanied, accompanied by a lack of concern for the consequences of those actions walking down a track like this towards the end of the jobs of the day and starting to think about dinner it's uh, it's easy to get thoughtful and uh, it's, it's it occurs to me as I'm being thoughtful about this this issue and uh, well you know the matters of the day it occurs to me that there can often be um, a sort of a faded line between things that we can all experience to some extent and things that just build away into what can be even up to up to the level of serious mental illness just heading along the the road of life there are many bends in the road and at various points we may ourselves have made rapid unplanned decisions and reactions that we might find haven't been good for us we may act without adequate consideration for the consequences of our actions when we act suddenly like that as well and yet it stops it stops short of this serious mental illness that we really shouldn't minimize and should take seriously but it's it's somewhere on the road towards and it can also have bad consequences for ourselves now i guess in many of us there's that tendency that ability to act without regard for the consequences and to react quickly in an unplanned manner and then have things go not so good for us as a result and the bible's big on that the bible's got a lot on that uh, self-control thing the control of impulse which is governed by some i don't know something way down in the bottom of our deeper nature that ain't good and needs to be dealt with impulse control disorder can affect things like uh, wanting to set fire to things and, and you know we, we can we can all enjoy a good fire and we think, oh yeah burn that burn that and get carried away a bit but it, obviously the illness itself is a lot more serious than that and then there can be a desire to go shopping and that can become impulsive and it can get out of control and merge away into a, a facet of impulse control disorder but you know sometimes a bit of retail therapy does a lot of us a lot of good it, it's a matter of being able to, to step in and say whoa hang on this is getting this is getting beyond and, and where we can't then it becomes impulse control disorder of course it affects things like uh, sexual compulsion as well and uh, you know we all need to be be careful watch ourselves it can affect things like um, kleptomania in fact uh, stealing and yet well that's, that's never going to be a right one actually is it at whatever level that comes in we need to be able to exercise control to respect the property of other people and that's the thing so often with losing impulse control other people get hurt other people get damaged by it it uh, it impinges we impinge when we act just impulsively on the rights and the property sometimes of others 
I guess I've heard a lot of celebrities on the media uh, talking about their inner demons. I can understand why they do that because it can sometimes feel like that. There's a there's a monkey on the inside <laughs> misbehaving, and here we are on the outside trying to sort ourselves out and and act responsibly. But in the Bible, it takes takes that sort of thing quite seriously, where there is a reality of, of spiritual things that are wrong and and maybe spiritual forces in the world that tempt us to do things that are impulsive or out of control without regard for the consequences. So, Scripture says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. So, when we're relying on the resources of God, it says, then, you know, there's help for this uh, damaging impulsiveness and lack of concern the consequences of our actions now of course when we talk about mental illness and serious mental illness that you know that that's not the game that's not what it's about but when we're at that lower level yeah maybe maybe that bears thinking about you know to go to god at least for the resources to deal with his impulses and, and just take it to god in prayer say lord you know help me with this this is this ain't right this is Please give me an understanding of what the consequences of this are. Please help me deal with it in a disciplined manner with these impulses that are just not thought through. And then there's reassurance in the scriptures. Paul writes to the Corinthians, who were a bunch of people who apparently weren't very good at the self-control thing from everything we read about them. And he says, you know, God is faithful. He won't let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he'll give you a way out so that you can escape from underneath it all, underneath that burden of sudden impulsive tempa temptation to do stuff that, you know, the consequences are going to be expensive. See, as I have finished today's work up there and I'm uh, just walking back down, I'm taking the opportunity to walk this, this fence line here, this boundary. And, uh, you know, that fence, it looks like, it just looks like a bit of string, doesn't it? But you know what? In that there is a jolt. There's a shock, there's a pain and a penalty that comes your way if you try and cross that boundary when you shouldn't. There's a fence there. And it's there to protect what's beyond and often there to protect animals from what's beyond and all the rest of it. Uh, it's a protective thing. It's a fence line. It's got a jolt in it, a disincentive to do that because that ain't good. And as we, as we go through life, there are fences that are there for our benefit and to stop us getting that nasty jolt or to keep us from the harm that lies beyond. We need to have discipline to stay away from them because uh, otherwise we bring ourselves a bit of trouble and a bit of grief. Now, let's be clear, you know, we've been raising the question, raising the issue of serious mental illness. And we're not talking about that here now. We're talking about our own well-being, I guess you'd say, as we go through life. Today, I've been chatting to people, listening to people and hearing their issues in the two big livestock markets. and. You know, it's hard to escape the conclusion that quite often we're our own worst enemy, you know, and we've brought a measure of stuff or we've made reactions to things that are going on in life. <sighs> ain't good, ain't right. And there's a penalty to be paid for that. Resist the devil, Scripture says, and he'll flee from you. Draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. Use that self-discipline to deal with the impulse. Build it up, get strong in it. Get God's help to build up that resistance, uh, uh, a life of being able to say no to yourself. It's a treasure, you know, because quite often myself doesn't ask for the things it really ought to be asking for or the things that are going to do an awful lot of good. And scripture says the resources of God are available to help us to deal with those impulses that are sudden and unthought through, the consequences of which need to be taken more seriously. Now, I don't know if that helps anybody, but I felt it was right to raise that question today. If you're a person who's got that sort of uh, really, really serious situation, then, you know, we need to get you some help with that. If you're a person who at a normal level is just at the beginning of the road to that, like a lot of us are from time to time, we can be impulsive and make too quick a decision and react too quickly and think things not think of the consequences then of things um think of them too lightly that that that's normal and this is something to be considering people don't realize very often in my experience that god scripture christianity bible has got a lot to do and to help 
in circumstances like that, to help with things before it gets to be a problem, to help with things in practical and useful ways, to tap into the resources of God, to deal with things. And if we don't deal with them, if we don't learn ways and habits and disciplines that are, you know, more useful, can become a real problem to us in life. So there's my word for the week. Dealing with this whole question of impulse and impulse control. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you, strengthen you and ensure that you're not tempted beyond what you can bear. But make sure that you have a way to get out from under it. God bless you. That's my thought for the week. If we can be of help, there's contact details in what follows.